Welcome back to Breaking Spines, the miscellaneous book review show for reviewing miscellaneous books. Well, I hope you're having a good day to balance things out, because I'm bringing you a bummer of a book. It's The Hollow Man by Dan Simmons, not to be confused with the mystery novel of the same name by John Dixon Carr. Published in 1992 by Bantam Books, this is the story of Jeremy Bremen, a university lecturer who secretly has telepathic abilities. He's able to read the thoughts of others. Jeremy married the one other person he's ever met with these same abilities, a wonderful, intelligent woman named Gail, who, when the book opens, has just died from brain cancer. Distraught with grief, Jeremy finds he can no longer turn off his abilities and is forced to listen to everyone's thoughts at once. Seeking some kind of solitude, Jeremy burns down his house, empties his bank accounts, and makes a trek across the United States to find somewhere he can be at peace. It doesn't go very well. If there's one thing that ties this book together, it's that America in 1992 sucked. Every place Jeremy winds up in is, at best, a hollow lie, and at worst, deadly. Florida is a backwaters hole where mobsters dump bodies. Denver is a war zone of gang violence, where the homeless pile up under bridges and the rich are all sick perverts, many of them pedophiles. The American Southwest is so isolated that twisted serial killers can run amok on illegal immigrants, and no one will notice. Las Vegas is the final destination for those empty souls with nothing left to live for except for the payout of a slot machine. Even Disney World is shown as artificial, where the employees treat it as any other crappy minimum wage job, and the only people getting enjoyment out of the place is the make-a-wish children having one last happy moment before they senselessly die. People cheat on their spouses on Greyhound buses, county sheriffs arrest people without reason, and abusive husbands lay around drunk while their wives are in labor. This book might as well be called Life Sucks and Then You Die, but also there's telepathy. And if it was just that, this book would probably be too much of a slog. It's pretty clear at times that Dan Simmons, who would have been in his 40s when he wrote this, was airing out some of his opinions on the world brought about by the moral selling out of the baby boomer generation. A lot of this book reminds me of Robert R. McCammon's Mine, which is also a cross-country depression fest dealing with post-1980s malaise, just with fewer supernatural elements. However, unlike Mine, The Hollow Man is smart enough to offer a counterbalance. We cut back and forth between two points in Jeremy's life, the ongoing road trip from hell, and a span of time during his and Gail's marriage when they're tracking down a scientist to try and figure out the nature of their telepathy. These segments of Jeremy's past are much more pleasant. Jeremy and Gail's relationship feels very real and passionate. You get the sense that they'd have fell in love anyway even if they didn't have matching mind-reading powers. Though the telepathy does make their relationship a lot more fun to read. They sometimes bicker like a normal couple, but watching them bicker through telepathy is a hoot. Also, you have no idea how sexy telepath sex can be before now. And then we get to the science stuff. And yeah, it's technobabble, but it's technobabble done well. It takes some relatively well-known concepts in quantum mechanics, namely wave-particle duality, and plays around with it in ways that aren't real science, but A, still make sense, and B, are important for the sake of metaphor and theme. Yes, we've got another story that botches Schrodinger's cat again, but at least it does it for the sake of the narrative. See that, Croyd? That's how it's done. But even this stuff has its own level of melancholy. Of course, there's the inevitable reveal of Gail's cancer, but we also learn that they couldn't have children, and that eats them up badly. Also, the scientist they wind up tracking down? He's an old Jewish scientist whose entire family was killed in the Holocaust. Because Dan Simmons is fueled by your tears. But I'm leaving out what makes these flashback sequences really weird, in that they're being told by a mysterious unknown narrator. The present storyline, with Jeremy brushing shoulders with mobsters, drug pushers, and serial killers, is all told in the third person, but this stuff from the past is retold in first person by an unnamed, seemingly supernatural presence that has somehow tapped into Jeremy's memories. The mysterious narrator is the element that ties the past and present together, and figuring out how this person ties to Jeremy and Gale leads the story into a very beautiful and well-learned climax. I'm leaving a lot of things vague here, as this is a book that relies a lot on reveals and surprise twists throughout, and even after it's all over, there's a layer of, was that real or was that all in the character's head vagueness that ties back to the wave particle stuff mentioned earlier. And that's kind of the Hollow Man's saving grace. 
Even with the lovely Jeremy Gale relationship stuff that helps balance things out, I would have found this book a slog to get through if it was more straightforward. I've got enough crap to deal with in my real life to be reminded of how much the rest of the world sucks, even at the points where Simon goes so overboard that it's almost parody. No, the mystery, the twists, the vagueness, and the reveals were what made this book a big page turner for me. Would I recommend The Hollow Man? If you don't mind a book that won't make you smile that often, then yeah, I suppose I do. For whatever issues Dan Simmons seemed to have with the Pepsi generation, he can really whip up beautiful scenes when he wants to, and the payoff to all of this is equal parts touching and heartbreaking. If I was his editor, I'd tell him to pull back on some of the more cartoony elements. The mobsters are noticeably silly, like they're from a cheap Sopranos knockoff, and it doesn't really mesh well with things like the real-life violence between the Crips and the Bloods. This book also has one of the better supernatural romances out there. No, really, there was a time before Stephanie Meyer where supernatural romances were decently written and respected. So yeah, give The Hollow Man a try. Just have a box of tissues ready if you're a crier. Thank you for watching, and keep on breaking spines.